Today we'll be looking at lesson 5.5, solving systems equations by elimination. And our objective today is I can use elimination to correctly solve a system of linear equations in two out of two problems. Now we sort of introduced this in the last lesson. We intuitively did some elimination and we're going to look more closely at how to do this explicitly with the equations. So some basic solving principles here. We know how to solve equations in one variable, right? We have this x variable here. We circle that. We'd probably start with distribution to get rid of these parentheses. And then we do some opposite operations and get x by itself. It tends to look something like this. Step by step, and we come out with x equals 2. But we can't do that with systems of equations because we have two variables. We solve for one variable and we just get the other variable on the other side. It doesn't reduce it down to a number. So we can't solve these directly. What we have to do is a step like substitution. So we take this y value here, same as this y value up here, same as this on the other side of the equal sign, and we substitute it in right there. What happens when we do that is we get x plus 2 times x minus 10, what was in the box over here, equals 1. And you'll see we only have one variable now. We have an x and an x. And we can solve this using our normal solving methods. We can distribute and then combine like terms and get it down to the x on one side and a number on the other side. So the whole point of substitution is to make one of the variables disappear so we can use those same methods that we've used before. So elimination is the same idea. We want to make one variable disappear. We're just going to do it in kind of a different way. Poof! With magic wand. No, not quite. But it is a lot easier than substitution when it works. So let's take a look at this. So here we have a system of equations, x plus 2y equals 1 and negative x plus y equals negative 10. And we're going to try adding them straight down and seeing what happens. So x minus x, that's going to be 0, right? Poof! Disappears. The x's disappear. And what we're left with is 2y plus y that's going to be 3y. And then on this side, we have 1 minus 10. That's going to be negative 9. I'll go back to this previous slide so we can see the whole system. We said this was 3y equals negative 9. And now we only have one step to get to y, right? Because this 0 doesn't matter. We just need to get rid of this 3. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. Since we're multiplying, that's the opposite operation. These threes will cancel, and we get y equals negative 3. Very simple to get to that first variable value. Now, to get to the second one, we have to go back and do our same substitute solve. So we'll take this y value, negative 3, put it back into one of these original equations, maybe this first one, x plus 2 times y, which we said is negative 3, equals 1. We simplify that. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then we add 6 to both sides to get x by itself. We get x equals 7. So when we write the solution as an ordered pair, it would look like this. 7, negative 3, because we put the alphabetical letter first. We put the x first, then the y. So 7, negative 3 is our answer here. Let's try another one. So with elimination, we're going to add straight down and see what we get. Ideally, we will get one variable to disappear. Well, let's see, a plus a, we're going to get 2a. b plus negative b, those are going to cancel out, so we don't get anything there, just a 0. 5 minus 21 will be negative 16. So now, once again, very simple to get that first variable value. We're just going to divide both sides by 2. We get a equals negative 8. 
Now to get our b value, we're going to take that negative a, plug it back into one of these original equations. So negative 8 in for a plus b equals 5. We can add 8 to both sides to get rid of it. We get b equals 13. So if we write our answer like this as an ordered pair, a, b, again, typically write those in alphabetical order, it would be negative 8, 13. That's our answer. Now, to use elimination, we're going to need like terms on top of each other. We need them lined up. So you can see in this problem, we have an 8 and a 4x. Are those like terms? Can we add those together? They are not because they don't have the same variable. This one doesn't have a variable, and this one has an x. We can only combine x terms with other x terms. So you can see these ones are not the same, these ones are not the same, and these ones are not the same, plus the equal sign isn't even lined up. So we need to manipulate these equations to make the terms line up. So one method we can use to do this, one of the tools we can use is the symmetric property of equality, and that tells us that if a equals b, then b equals a. Basically, we can swap sides of an equal sign and things will still be equal. That makes sense. Right? If a equals 7, 7 equals a. And that's correct. So how about we just swap sides on this top equation and see what we get? So I'm going to take this whole thing and bring it over to the left side. I get 6x minus y. And then I'll take a over to this side. We get equals 8. Now we have our x terms lined up, our y terms lined up, and our number lined up. So let's try adding that straight down. 4x plus 6x will be 10x. y minus y, that's just going to cancel, right? That's y minus y is 0, and then 12 plus 8 is 20. Once again, just a single step to get to x now. Just divide both sides by 10. These 10s cancel, and we get x equals 2. Very simple. Now we can take that 2 value and put it in either of our original equations. Let's try the second equation, just for fun. So 4 times the x value, which we said is 2, plus y equals 12. 4 times 2 is 8. And we'll subtract that 8 from both sides. y equals 4. So our overall answer here is 2, 4. Now we can check this in Desmos, remember. Any method we use to solve a system of equations should get the same answer. So if we use substitution, if we use elimination, if we use Desmos, we should get that same answer. So let's take a look at these equations in Desmos and see if we get this point, 2, 4, where they intersect. So here we are in Desmos. I've typed in the equations exactly as they were originally, and you can see 2, 4 is indeed the point that we got with elimination and graphing both. So we verified that, that is the correct answer by using two different methods. So here's a summary of the elimination steps we've looked at so far. The first step we needed to do was line up like terms. We're going to skip step two for just a second. Then we add straight down, solve, substitute back in, and solve. So this looks a lot like the substitute steps we had before, except this original, these original few steps might make it a little bit faster and easier than substitution does. So let's look at an example. Okay, our first step is to line up like terms. So let's see, we have x and x, y and y, number and number. That looks good. We don't have a step two right now, so we'll just call that done. And then we add straight down. Okay, add straight down like this. 2x 
plus negative 2x, that's going to be 0, those are going to cancel. 3x plus negative, or sorry, 3y minus 2y. So 3 minus 2 is just 1. We just get y. 1y is y. 21 minus 16 will be 5. Look how easy that one was. That one just came out to the variable value exactly. y equals 5, so easy. All right, so we added straight down. We didn't even have to do anything to solve. Now we're back to our substitute step. We can take this 5 and put it back in for one of these y's, maybe this one. So 2x plus 3y, we said our y value is 5, so 3 times 5, and all of that equals 21. 3 times 5 is 15. Now we're looking to get that x by itself, so we're going to remove the furthest away term. We're going to do the opposite operation. We're adding 15, so we're going to subtract 15, opposite operation. These 15s will cancel. We get 2x equals 21 minus 15 is 6. We divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals 3. Now remember to put your coefficient or your coordinates in the correct order. So our x value is 3, that goes first. And our y value is 5. So there's our answer, 3, 5. finish those last two steps. All right, let's take a look at this one. What should we do first on this problem? Well, let's take a look at our first step, line up like terms. Hmm, we've got a D and a number, an E with the equal sign, equal sign. Hmm, this, this doesn't look lined up. So maybe, let's try this symmetric property of equality again, where we can flip sides of the equal sign. So we're going to take this negative 3 and bring it over to the left, and then we'll take the 6d plus e over to the right. Now if we add straight down, we get negative 15 minus 3, I believe that's negative 18, 3d plus 6d, that'll be 3 plus 6 is 9d. And then negative e plus e, those are going to cancel, so we just have 0 now. So we have a single step here to get the d value. We'll divide both sides by 9, that's the opposite operation, or also known as the inverse operation of multiply by 9. We're going to divide by 9. So those 9s will cancel. Negative 18 divided by 9 is just negative 2, and that equals d. So now we can take this negative 2 value and plug it back into one of these original equations. Uh, let's do this first one. This one has fewer negatives, and negatives can be a little bit confusing, so let's try this first one. 6 times d, which we said was negative 2, plus e equals negative 3. We just plugged that value of d right in there. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. And our last step to get e by itself is the inverse operation. This is a negative 12, so we're going to add a positive 12. The 12s will cancel, and we get e equals negative 3 plus 12 is 9. So if we were to write this as d, e as a coordinate pair, we'd have negative 2, 9. Okay, so what do we do if no terms cancel? Let's see what happens when we try to add these straight down, because we do have our terms lined up. 2x plus 2x is 4x. 3y minus 6y is going to be negative 3y. And then 19 minus 8, that's 11. But look, I still have, oh, I still have two variables. What do I do with that? 
Remember, we were trying to make one variable disappear. So that didn't work how I wanted it to work. What do you think we could do to make one of these variables disappear? And you can maybe think back to uh, our lesson last week on dog food and cat food. We had some logical methods we did that day. What might we do to one of these equations to make it so that these terms cancel? Just erase this. So what might we do for one of these equations? Well, let's look at our x term. We can see this is a 2x and this is a 2x. So if we could make one of those negative, then they would cancel, right? A 2x and a negative 2x would cancel. So what we can do is we can multiply an entire equation by negative 1. Or we can multiply it by anything. We can multiply it by any number. But in this case, multiplying it by negative 1 will change the sign on everything. So 2x times negative 1 is going to be negative 2x. Negative 6y times negative 1, that'll be positive 6y. And then negative 8 times negative 1 will be positive 8. So now, if we bring that first equation down and write it directly underneath, we can add straight down now. The negative 2x and the 2x will cancel. 6y and the 3y will be 9y. 6 plus 3 is 9. And the 8 plus 19, that's 27. So 9y equals 27. We have one step to get y by itself. Let's divide by 9. So y equals 27 divided by 9 is 3. Now before we go back and finish this off to, to figure out the x value, let's talk about why we can do this, why we can multiply an entire equation by negative 1. So if you think back, we had the multiplication property of equality, and it said that if a equals b, then a times z equals b times z. So we can multiply both sides by the same thing, and our outcome will be equal. So that's exactly what we did over here. Our z value would be negative 1 in this case. We multiplied it by this side, and we multiplied it by this side. So we use the multiplication property of equality to modify an equation to get opposite terms, negative 2x and a positive 2x. Now you may have seen a different way to do that. You may have noticed that the 3y and the 6y could easily become opposites, like we could have multiplied this whole equation by 2. We'd come up with positive 6y and negative 6y, and then our y's would have canceled. That is also okay you can eliminate whichever variable you want to, whichever one appeals to you or whichever one looks easiest, go for that one. We just happen to go for the x values in this example. Okay, so we got our y value. Let's go back and get our x. We'll plug it into one of these original equations. 2x plus 3y, we said y was 3, equals 19. So 3 times 3 is 9. We're going to subtract 9 from both sides. That's the term that's furthest away from x. We get 2x equals 19 minus 9 is 10. We'll divide both sides by 2. We get x equals 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our solution here is 5, 3. Now remember, we can always check these in Desmos. Let's try that again. Let's check this one in Desmos. We're looking for the point 5, 3. And here we are in Desmos. I've typed in the equations exactly as they were originally. And over here we have 5, 3. So we've confirmed that is indeed the correct answer we got with elimination.
So we're revising our elimination steps now. We line up like terms initially, and then we just did this new step. If needed, if we need to create opposites, if they aren't already there, we're going to multiply one equation by a number to create opposites. Everything else is the same. So let's look at an example of that. Let's solve this one by elimination. So we'll look at our A variables, we'll look at our B variables and say, hmm, is there a way we can make these variables cancel by multiplying one of the equations by something? Well, three and two, those ones aren't easy. We'd have to, we'd probably have to multiply both of them or come up with something clever like three halves. But A looks a lot easier. We have three A and just one A. We could multiply this entire equation by three and get another three A. But then three A plus three is gonna be six A, right? So we actually need a negative on that as well. We need it to be negative 3a. So let's multiply this entire top equation by negative 3 and see what we get. Negative 3 times a is negative 3a. Negative 3 times 2b, that's going to be negative 6b. And negative 3 times 18, we'll try that in our calculator, that is negative 54. And now that we've done that, we can add straight down. And we get 3a minus 3a, that's just going to cancel out to 0. 3b minus 6b, that's going to be negative 3b. And then 30 minus 54 will be negative 24. We can put that in our calculator if we need to. Now we have just a single step to get our b value. We're going to divide both sides by negative 3. That's because we're multiplying by negative 3. So when we divide, those cancel. On the left side, we get b. On the right side, we have a negative divided by a negative, so we're going to get a positive. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. b equals 8. Now to come up with a, let's see, we've done that step, that step, add straight down we did, and we solved. So now we're on our substitute step. We're going to take our b value, plug it into one of our original equations, doesn't matter which one. Maybe we'll try the first one. a plus 2 times b, which we said was 8, equals 18. 2 times 8 is 16. We have one easy step to get the value of a now. We just subtract 16 from both sides because we're adding. Our inverse operation is subtract. These 16s cancel and we get a equals 2. 18 minus 16 is 2. So we can write this coordinate pair as a, b, and our answer is 2, 8. Okay, one more practice problem today and we're done. This is the most complicated one, so let's look closely at it. First step is line up like terms. So we've got an x and a y, a y and an equal sign, an x and an equal sign. Ooh, numbers, okay. So these are definitely not lined up. But one thing you'll also notice, even if we switched sides on one of these, the x and the y are on the same side of the equal sign here. They're on different sides of the equal sign here. So we're actually gonna have to manipulate this equation some other way. We're gonna have to use some other property than the symmetric property of equality. What other properties of equality do we know about that we could possibly use? Well, we have all those properties that we use when we're solving, right? We can add things, we can subtract things. As long as we do the same thing to both sides, we can manipulate an equation. So let's try the subtraction property of equality to get this x over here with this y. So I'm going to subtract this entire term, negative 4x, from both sides. And since up here we wrote the x first, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to write the x term first. Negative 4x plus 2y. On the right side, these x terms go away, they cancel, and I'm just left with negative 30. Okay, so now it looks like if we write that top equation right underneath it, we have x 
plus 3y equals 4. So now it looks like our terms are lined up. We have x's, y's, and numbers. But we still don't have opposites. We're still not going to have anything cancel. This will be negative 3x, this will be 5y. So we'll still have variable terms. So now we need to do that second step. Multiply one equation to create opposites. So do you see an opportunity here to create opposites? Maybe this x and that x. We could multiply this whole bottom equation by 4 to get positive 4x. That would cancel. You could try it with y, but once again, the 2 and the 3 makes it a little bit tricky. You might have to multiply both equations by something in order to get what we'd call the least common multiple, which would be 6. I think having our x's cancel will be easier. So let's try that one. We're going to multiply this bottom equation by 4. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3y is 12y. 4 times 4 is 16. And now we'll take this equation immediately underneath. And now if we add straight down, we do get something to cancel. 4x minus 4x is just 0. 12y plus 2y is 14y. 16 minus 30 is negative 14. You can also put that in your calculator if you need to. And now we just have one step to solve for y. We're multiplying by 14, so we'll divide both sides by 14. y equals a negative divided by a positive is a negative. 14 divided by 14 is 1, so y equals negative 1. All right, we, so we made opposites, we added straight down, we solved, we are on to our substitute step. Let's take this y value and put it back into one of these equations. Maybe this first one looks a little bit simpler. So x plus 3 times y, we said y was negative 1, equals 4. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And then we just add 3 to both sides to get rid of it, get the x by itself. We get x equals 7. Our solution here is 7, negative 1. Now we said we like to use elimination a lot of the time because it's easier, right? Because one variable will just fall out pretty easily. We had to do kind of a lot of work to get that to happen in this particular problem. So if you're looking at a system of equations, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, this might be really tricky to get it to eliminate, maybe that's not the best method to solve this one. It's really up to you a lot of the time which method you want to use because, again, they should all produce the same answer. So maybe you might look at this one and say, hmm, that might be hard to line up those, those like terms, and also I don't see any that'll cancel. So maybe substitution would be better and I can just solve for that x. Or maybe I have Desmos available and I'll just graph this one. So sometimes elimination is a great option. It makes that first step super simple. Sometimes it's more complicated and it wouldn't be the one you'd want to choose. That's sort of up to you to determine. So that wraps up today's objective. I can use elimination to correctly solve a system of linear equations in two out of two problems.